Today, AMD just released an update that makes monitors better. AMD hits back at NVIDIA. Next-gen GPUs are getting more VRAM and Ryzen 10,000. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD just made an update that should increase the specs of future monitors. After nine years, AMD has officially updated the requirements of their FreeSync certification. Now, before I get more into the story, some people are confusing this to mean that their current monitor will quit supporting FreeSync or their GPU will be required to reach these levels to have FreeSync going. Neither of those are the case. Instead, this is AMD raising the requirements for monitor makers to receive FreeSync certification. And that's really nothing but a positive because it will push monitor makers to up the specs of their products. So why are they doing this? Well, in the blog post by AMD, the company states, quote, Considering all the changes that took place in the gaming world since 2015, we have decided to update our FreeSync technology tier requirements in September 2023 to reflect the latest standards and technologies in gaming. Of course, they're just now announcing it, but that was likely to give manufacturers enough time to make the change. So what about the actual specs? Well, for starters, their laptop certification requirements remain the same. This only changes monitors and TVs. And when it comes to those, the basic FreeSync certification goes from not requiring a minimum frame rate to monitors under 3440 horizontal pixels, requiring a minimum of 144 Hz. To get their FreeSync Premium certification, you'll need a monitor above 3440 horizontal pixels and at least 200 Hz. Finally, FreeSync Premium Pro requires FreeSync HD are as well as the requirements under FreeSync Premium. Basically, these mean that monitor makers will be required to meet these standards if they want to slap a FreeSync sticker onto their monitor. And that means faster specs for us. Next up for today, AMD hits back at NVIDIA. But first, getting all the best PC hardware news has never been easier. Just subscribe to GamerMeld and hit that bell icon to get notified on all the new PC hardware coming out. Now back to the story, the age of local AI bots is finally here. If you remember not too long ago, Nvidia announced an application called Chat with RTX. It's just a demo right now, but it allows you to add a chatbot to your PC that can run locally. This is of course done via their Tensor course, so you need an Nvidia GPU to do it. But this comes with some very nice benefits. For one, because it's run locally, you don't have to worry about companies using the information you feed it. You can also use it to look through YouTube videos, learn from documents, documents that you feed it and more. Now with all of this not to be outdone, Intel actually demonstrated their own CPU and GPU solutions to running your own local AI. The difference is that Intel only went over how to program your own chatbot with Python rather than actually releasing an app, so it's not as user friendly to say the least. Well, AMD has now published a blog post on how you can do the same thing with either an RX 7000 GPU or one of their new APUs with Ryzen AI. And because AMD has Rock them, you're able to use the third-party LM Studio to create your own LLM chatbot without having to code or anything like that. Either way, it's great to see every manufacturer offer a way to run your own local AI chatbot. And next up, in my last video, I discussed the fact that GDDR7 specs were officially announced. Well, today we're already hearing about it being included in next-gen cards. This story originally comes from a new tweet from 3D Center, who explains that GDDR7 chips can come in 2, 3, 4, 6, and even 8 gigabyte modules. As they state, this could make for some wild configurations like 24 gigabytes on a 256-bit bus. Of course, the memory bus width is still pretty important, and would likely need to be large for quicker access to memory. But the big implication to me is that GDDR7 means more memory. With that said, according to a reply from known leaker Copite 7 Kimmy, GPU makers will use 16 gigabit modules first, and that means 2 gigabyte capacity each. So not really a change from current gen GPUs, but that could just be the lower end next gen parts. Either way, with GDDR7 getting such high capacity, we should finally start seeing VRAM capacity going up across GPUs. 
And lastly for today, AMD's next-gen Ryzen was recently leaked. I'm talking Zen 6 based APUs, which should be their Ryzen 10,000 parts. This story originally comes from a data mining site that specifically focuses on LinkedIn profiles of those working in the semiconductor industry. And in a recent update, a profile looks to have given us a few code names for upcoming APUs. Starting things off, we have Strix Point, which AMD has already released that it's set to be built on Zen 5 and RD a3 plus next is the codename sarlacc and that's the codename rumored for Strix Halo, which should also be built on Zen 5, but with a monster integrated GPU. Next up, we have Kraken Point, which is one that was recently leaked, and it's supposed to come with four Zen 5 and four Zen 5C cores, along with four workgroup processors for the iGPU, so it would still be under the Ryzen 9000 moniker. Finally is the new one we've never seen before until now, and it's codenamed Soundwave, and this should be built on Zen 6, which would mean we're talking Ryzen 10,000. Not only that, but according to this, it would be built on three nanometers. Of course, as I recently went over, don't forget that this doesn't represent the actual size of the transistors. But given it's still likely TSMC, it does represent a die shrink for a nice boost in performance. Time will tell just how much performance that is, but it's good to see AMD is already hard at work. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for 3 nanometers on Ryzen 10,000? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day!